to the Lord, he to whom wonders belong. Rejoice in his triumph and tell of his power. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Now to the ends of the earth, see his salvation is shown and still Changing in love to his own. Sing a new song and rejoice. Publish his praises abroad. Let voices in chorus with trumpet and horn resound for the joy of the Lord. Join the hills and the sea, thunders of praise to prolong. In judgment and justice, he comes to the earth. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Let us continue our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Christ is the true vine, and there are many branches. We pray today that we, the branches, will go grow stronger on the vine and that all may grow closer together as we share Christ's mission on this earth. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. Thank you so much for being here, all of our friends and family who have traveled from near and far to be here. A special word of uh, gratitude to our first communicants and their families for being here today. Thank you so much for your support that you're offering to these young people today. What a blessing it is for us to be here as a congregation on this fifth Sunday of Easter. We continue to uh, create a new song in our hearts, as our first opening hymn said today. As we do so, we prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries, the mysteries of hearing God's word and receiving the sacrament of the altar. And so, let us pause for a moment to call to mind our sins and to ask for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you redeem us by your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, Peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world. Re 
receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new and holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord, that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus, he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord, and with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. worship before him. 
They shall worship him, O the mighty of the earth. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. And my soul shall live for him, my descendants serve him. They shall tell of the Lord to generations yet to come. Declare his saving justice to peoples yet unborn. These are the things the Lord has done. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word and speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither, 
people will gather them and throw them into a fire and they will be burned. If you, remember, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, as we were introduced uh, this evening, we were reminded that it is the fifth Sunday of Easter. And throughout these past five weeks, we've had the opportunity to read from the Acts of the Apostles, which has been uh, most of our first, uh, which has been our first readings from the very day after our Easter celebration, right through until now. We begin to understand the work of the disciples, the followers of Jesus. And we read from the Acts of the Apostles because we want to be able to understand what that early church community was like, what they struggled with and what they were dealing with, the challenges that they faced and the joys that they celebrated together. And there are many hallmarks um, that kind of remind us of our own community in, in a lot of ways when we read from the Acts of the Apostles and uh, we're reminded of the, the closeness of, of the believers and how they worshiped together. They prayed together. They celebrated the Eucharist with one another and they preached the good news in good times and in bad. Over the past week or so, though, we've been encountering uh, a, a new character that's been introduced to us in the Acts of the Apostles. His name was originally Saul. And we hear about this Saul a little earlier on because he comes onto the scene as a persecutor of the Christians. He comes onto the scene as somebody who was persecuting the followers of Jesus. And he did so relentlessly. He did so without abandon. And he, was, he, he persecuted them tirelessly, pursuing them bringing them in to make sure that, their, that justice in his eyes would be served. That not a single Christian would be able to speak about the love of God or be able to share the good news of Christ without receiving the persecution that they deserved at the hands of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Well, it didn't take long before our Acts of the Apostles accounts for the fact that St. Paul experienced a radical conversion of heart. That his heart was moved in such a way that he no longer could see the value of persecuting Christians, but rather the message of Christ himself became something that was transformative in his life. His heart was opened, his eyes were opened, and finally he began to see the true meaning of the gospel message of Jesus. That it wasn't a message that was meant to hinder the Jewish people. That it wasn't a message that was meant to steer the Gentiles wrong, but rather it was a message that was rooted in abundance. It was a message that was meant to enhance a person's relationship with God. In fact, to enhance it so much that even a follower of Christ would be comfortable calling the Divine One Abba, Father. For the very first time, those words would have crossed a believer's lips because it would have been unthinkable in Jesus' time to call the Heavenly One our Father. And yet we do so here every day, don't we? Because we believe that that good news that Jesus has shared with us gives us the opportunity to be adopted sons and daughters of the one who loved us so much. Of the one who loved us so much that he sent his son into the world 
for our well-being. And so Saul, the persecutor of the Christians, gets a new name. He becomes Paul, and now we see Paul is being persecuted himself for the message that he is bringing, the message that he's bringing not only to, the, uh, to, to local communities, but now we see him traveling all the way to Tarsus and bringing the good news of Christ to that community. Paul is relentless as he was in his persecution, now spreading the good news of Jesus. He does not tire. He remains connected to Jesus in an intimate way by making sure that his words echo the words of his Savior. It's beautiful to see how close St. Paul relates to those early Christians. In fact, he even calls himself an apostle of Christ. But we know that St. Paul didn't actually follow the, or know the apostles. He knew of them, but his timing was a little later, wasn't it? He came onto the scene a little later and was able to continue the good work that many of those early Christians had began, had begun, excuse me. So we look to our gospel reading today and we're inspired by the fact that St. Paul would have, uh, would have understood this message well had it been proclaimed in his time. He knew what it meant to be a branch that would have been grafted on to the body of Christ. That, that branch that does not, is not swept away and wither, but rather a branch and a vine that is tended by his heavenly Father. And we all desire to be that branch. We all desire to have that intimate relationship with Christ. I know that our, confer, uh, excuse me, our first communicants today, these young people who are presenting themselves for First Communion for the very first time, have studied this reading. I know personally that they would have understood that their relationship is one of love, of God, and that each one of the young people here have made a very special commitment. They have opened their hearts and their minds to the reality of a God who loves them, and they continue to learn about God, to seek out the answers that their hearts desire the answers that only a relationship with God can give. And so, I invite each one of you today to continue to grow in your faith, to share the good news that St. Paul was so relentlessly willing to share in our first reading, and to carry the love of God with you wherever you go. For you know that God loves each of you intimately and wants nothing but the best for each of you. And so thank you for being here today. We thank your parents and your grandparents, godparents and the like, friends and family who are here with you today. We thank each of them for their word and their example as they continue to share the faith with you in a variety of ways. And so at this time, I'd like to invite our first communicants to please stand. And if you wouldn't mind, uh, we're going to renew your baptism promises at this time. And so we're going to need you to speak nice and loud as we renew your baptism promises. I need you to say, I do, to each one of these questions, okay? And can you do that nice and loud? So when I raise my hand, you're going to say, I do, nice and loud, so that everyone can hear you, okay? All right. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, died, and was buried, 
rose from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? My dear friends, this is our faith. This is the faith of the church, and we are proud that you have professed it with us this day as we pray these things through Christ our Lord. How about a round of applause for our young people? Thank you very much for standing. Each of you may um, um, actually let us all please stand at this time as we will now offer our prayers of petition to our Heavenly Father. generous laborers in the Lord's vineyard and for dedicated witnesses to God's word. For wise leaders of the world's nations and for careful stewards of the earth's resources. For greater awareness of human trafficking and a greater effort to eradicate it. For our children who are receiving the Eucharist for the very first time. May they return to the table of the Lord each week in order to receive his love and the strength needed to live as his disciples. For abundant blessings on his community gathered in the truth and for the renewed commitment to the deeds of justice. For all who have died, especially Jeline, Carl, and Arthur Linus, who died this past week, and for those remembered at this Mass, Leroy Birney. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Hear our Heavenly Father, we offer you these prayers of petition, those that we have voiced aloud and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We ask that you answer all of them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the preparation of the altar and the presentation of our gifts. And uh, we will also be taking up our collection at this time. I just want to thank you in advance for your generous uh, support of this collection, uh, which obviously goes towards helping uh, us to continue to form our young people in the ways of the faith. Our preparation hymn is number 721, You Are Mine, number 721. to you in the silence I will lift you from all your fear you will hear my voice I claim you as my choice be still and know I am here I am hope for all who are hopeless I am eyes for all who long to see in the shadows of the night 
stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bound by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that, bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim. <laughs> Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you, and let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us stand and pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. I just want to once again uh, thank our first communicants and congratulate them on receiving your first Holy Communion. Uh, I know it's a very memorable time for you and as it was for me when I received my first communion many, many years ago. So you guys did a lot better than I did. I went back and I watched, I watched the video of my first communion not too long ago and I remember practicing the sign of the cross, making sure I was going to do it the proper way, right? And so we all stood in front of church, and I, I messed up since we were facing the wrong direction. I ended up making the sign of the cross backwards, and everyone else got it right. <laughs> so don't worry. If you're thinking about being a priest and you messed up the sign of the cross, there's still hope, right? <laughs> Very good. Congratulations to all of you. Yep, round of applause for them. Just a word of thanks to Amanda Cords, our uh, formation director for our young people. Uh, she works tirelessly for these kids, and her and her catechists did a great job of preparing them in the practice of the faith. So we thank Amanda and her team. We also thank our musicians, our readers, and everyone who helped today, mass servers, everyone who helped today to make sure that our celebration was beautiful. A word of thanks also to our parents, grandparents, I know that each of you uh, value your faith and you take your faith seriously and we're, we're glad that you were here with us today and we look forward to seeing you in many more weeks to come. So, The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Our closing hymn is number 576, Canticle of the Sun, number 576. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing. Sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the Son, the bringer of day. He carries the light of the Lord in his rays, the moon and the stars who light up the way unto your throne. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the wind that flows through the trees, the sea's mighty storms, the gentlest breeze. They blow where they will, they blow where they please, to please the Lord. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Sing, sing to the glory of the Lord.
to the 